you. If we get 10,000 likes on this video, I'll make the next dev chat in reverse. Does that sound good to you? Sounds good to me. Here's a sneak preview of it. Okay, you caught me. That was just an audio clip of me saying pizza pizza me so hungry I love pizza. But I promise you, if we achieve our goal, it'll be legit next time. Alright, enough promises. We're here for a new dev chat. And you know what? We've got one. This dev chat is from April 22nd, 2022. If you want to read the whole document, you can find the link in the description alongside the links for Paralyze's website, social media accounts, and Patreon page. Going back to promises for a second, I want everyone here to remember that these dev chats aren't about confirming or promising anything. It's more so about brainstorming. If you have a question about the development, I highly recommend you review the development page and roadmap on the Paralyze's website. First, we've got our community voted question. I think most of us are very interested in family trees. Like how detailed will they be? Will you be able to see stepdads and step siblings and extended family like that? Half siblings? Great aunts? Second cousin once removed? At this point, it's hard to confirm details about the family tree, but a flexible complete family tree does sound good to me. Moving on to general questions. There will be a new patient zero, if you will, for children paras. However, they will use the same setup skeleton with a reduced height. That means animations can be transferred across rigs if necessary. Babies and toddlers will have their own mesh, and all the other life stages will use the adult mesh. This is a good reminder that players will be able to add their own animations through the modding system. Moving on to live mode. One of the things I'm very excited to see is the life stages. I want to know how many we're going to get, how will aging work, is it going to be a life stage or gradual aging or a bit of both. Sadly, today is not the day we're going to get a confirmation on any of this, so I'm just going to have to daydream. This is an excellent idea. We saw Sebastian take off his shoes at the door. Will the paras be able to do that in other situations? Maybe they wear flip-flops with their swimwear but remove the flip-flops before getting into the pool. Not only does this add another layer in the gameplay, but it kind of also adds another layer into the paramaker side of things. Because now, you can like dress somebody up with that in mind. So if it works for like winter gear, you can have them wear boots and a toque and mittens and whatever, a scarf if you want. And if they walk through the house, they can take it off instead of just walking through the house with everything on. Which frustrates me about another game, which I'm not going to say the name of that game, but I think we all know which game I'm talking about. Anywho, good idea, excellent idea. I do hope that this gets implemented into the game. Lastly, there were some questions and ideas and answers for Paramaker stuff. You'll be able to utilize three face-related sliders, height, width, and depth, to create custom faces in Paralives. You might not be able to change the size of your Para's pupils with a slider, but you will be able to add a new texture to the eyes through the mod system. I have a feeling that there's going to be some interesting and sometimes wacky eyes in the game. I can't wait to see what everyone's going to be making. I would love to see some nail polish in Paralives. I mean, it's not like a huge situation if there isn't, but would be a little nice touch even if it was just a plain color with no patterns to it. But like I said, it's okay if there isn't any nail polish. There won't be a system to allow you to paint on any birthmarks or anything of that sort onto the paras. This is because the system that they have already is pretty powerful. You'll be able to place tattoos or birthmarks on multiple parts of a para's body, and that could help you achieve various looks if you want to. The layering system won't be limited to tops. That means if you want to relive or experience for the first time wearing skirts or dresses over pants, you might 
be able to do so. Personally, I don't think I ever want to go back to those days where I'd always wear a ruffled pencil skirt over bright blue jeans. Looking back on that, I don't think that was very punk of me, which is what I was trying to go for. It was kind of just odd looking, especially because I would pair it with like a teal shirt that had like a dinosaur or a ninja that was like, catch me if you can. You know, those graphic t-shirts. I'm feeling kind of cringed out even thinking about it. But hey, that's just my own personal preference. If you want to relive or experience those fashion mistakes, mistakes, I mean, fashion choices, go for it. At least it's in a video game and not in grade eight, thinking you're so cool and so very emo punk. Ugh. As of right now, you won't be able to flip a feature or an element like a hairstyle or a top. That means if there's an off the shoulder type top, you cannot flip that. It'll always be on the right side if it was made for the right side. Or if you have side bangs, those side bangs are staying on the side that they were created on. There's no flipping. Our final question is this one right here. Was it difficult to make a child para compared to the adult paras? The only difficult thing was trying to make Eli, the first child para, look like a child and not a really small adult. That's pretty funny to think about and very interesting because there is a huge difference between what children look like and what adults look like. So <laughs> there you have it. That's it everyone. Please don't forget to like this video. It does help me out quite a bit. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified when the next dev chat video goes up. Thank you for watching. Stay happy, healthy, and hydrated. Until next time, bye!